Do commercial landlords really need valid EPC for all of their properties? It might come as a surprise to some of our viewers, but the answer is actually no. And this common misconception could see landlords incur the cost of energy improvement works to boost their energy performance certificate or EPC rating when they don't have to. This is because under the Minimum Energy Efficiency Standards Regulations, which I'll now refer to as MEAS, it is only lawful for a landlord to let or to continue to let its property where it holds a valid EPC with a rating below E. So, if the landlord doesn't already have a valid EPC for its property and is not required to get one, it won't fall within the MEAS regime. So, the first question to ask yourself is, does my property need a valid EPC? If you previously commissioned and registered an EPC, it will remain valid for 10 years. There's no general obligation to obtain a new one once that one's expired. Instead, this obligation is triggered by plans to sell or let your property. In that scenario, if more than 10 years have elapsed since you've got your previous EPC or you've never obtained one, you'll need to get a new one. If you're only selling or letting part of the property, then generally speaking, you'll only need to have an EPC for that specific part. As with all of these things, there are some exceptions to the need to get an EPC in the scenarios that I've mentioned. These exceptions include buildings earmarked for demolition, some buildings with industrial agricultural uses, some buildings with particular architectural or historical significance, standalone buildings with a useful floor area of less than 50 metres squared, and perhaps the most common exception is the grant of the 1954 Act Renewal Lease, where government guidance has confirmed that a valid EPC is not required because the tenant is already in occupation of the property. But it's worth mentioning there's still some, some debate over this because of conflicting government guidance on these regulations. So what happens if you aren't required to retain an EPC, but get one voluntarily, and this comes back with a substandard rating? This point hasn't been tested in the courts yet, but there is a risk that this new EPC could inadvertently engage MEAS obligations when your property could otherwise have continued to have been lawfully let for the foreseeable future. To avoid this risk, we recommend that landlords avoid wholesale EPC renewals across their portfolio, so limiting this to the properties where you have to get one and that your leases are drafted so as to prohibit tenants from retaining EPCs without your consent or at all. The last thing to note on EPCs is that if commercial landlords fail to obtain a valid EPC where required, they can face a financial penalty of up to £5,000. So if you're unsure about whether your property needs an EPC, please contact one of the team at CMS. But to find out more about MEAS regulations and how they affect your estate, click on the link above.